Where usually an enemy is just waiting for the moment to destroy you. Whether destroy you by a weapon or destroy you by hunger or starvation. But the people of Yathrib will fight to ban As'ad during the day. And will be generous to him, send him the hospitality and food and water and drinks and presents at night. While to ban, bin Asa, while to ban Asa'ad bin Rabi'ah was fighting against the people of Yathrib, Yathrib was surrounded with some of the tribes of the Jews. There was Bani Quraidah, Bani Nadir, Bani Qaynuqa. Two scholars from Bani Quraidah, who are scholars from the Jews, came to Tuban. When Tuban was fighting against the people of Yathrib. And they came to Tuban to give him an advice. They told him, look, this place is a protected place. It's going to be the settlement of a prophet that's coming very soon. And I do not advise you to fight against the people of that city or else Allah will send His wrath upon you. I advise you to go back to Yemen. And he listened and he kept on listening from those two scholars from the Jews. And he liked their teachings. And day by day, them preaching to Tuban, Tuban accepted the religion of Judaism. And this was the beginning how the religion of Judaism started to begin and start in the Arabian Peninsula. And Tuban liked those two scholars from the Jews, that he made them he, one of his main men. He made them one of his main consultants. And he took them from Yathrib and they started to travel with him. He left Medina and he took the advice of those two scholars from the Jews. And he realized that these two scholars are very firm on what they say. And he became a Jew himself and he followed their religion. And they became his advisors. And they advised him to leave Yathrib to go back to Yemen. So he left Yathrib. On the way traveling to Yemen, Mecca comes in between. So Mecca is in between Medina, Yathrib and Yemen. On the way traveling to Yemen, he met two Arabs from the tribe of Hudayn. Those two Arabs wanted to plot against Tuban. And they wanted also to plot against Quraysh. And they had a bigger problem with Quraysh than what they had with Tuban. And they saw Tuban with a big army traveling past Mecca. So they wanted to take advantage of that to turn Tuban against Quraysh. For Tuban to demolish Quraysh and then they themselves will be free from the harm of Quraysh. So they came to Tuban and they told him, look, if you really want wealth, you want jewelry, you want gold, you want silver, there's a house by the name of Kaaba. Under that house, it's full of jewelry, full of gold, full of silver. And the people of Quraysh are so selfish, they would not let anyone go near it. So if you really want to become rich, go to that house, demolish it, and take its silver, and take its gold and jewelry, and then you will earn a great kingdom and, and, and you'll have a, a great treasure. Deceiving him. And of course, if Quraysh loses the Kaaba, then Quraysh has no longer respect among the Arab because they were respected because of the Kaaba. So Tuban got deceived. And what Tuban did, he went towards Mecca to demolish the Kaaba and to take out the jewelry and take it for himself. Who heard of his attempt? Those two scholars from the Jews. When they heard Tuban is attempting to go and demolish the Kaaba and take out the jewelry and Vanished the Kaaba, they came to him and said, If you want to destroy yourself, you will go and destroy the Kaaba. By Allah, no one had ever came near that house, and Allah Azza wa did not destroy him. This house is the early house of Allah, and it's the house, it's the early house of Allah, and anyone that attempted suit, anyone that intended suit, which means anyone that attended, had intention of harm, or bringing harm to this house, Allah Azza wa brought the harm back to them. So he said, what do I do? They told him, these people, the tribe from Huday, these two men from the tribe of Huday are trying to deceive you and play a game on you. So what he did in return, he grabbed them and he killed them. He slaughtered them. And, he, and those two scholars from the Jews told him, go back, go to Mecca and do what the rest of the pilgrims do. You go, you, you do circulation, tawaf around the Kaaba and you slaughter for the sake of Allah, and you feed the poor, and you do the rest of the people what the rest of the people do. So he went, and he went to Dantawaf, and he slaughtered, and he started to give out a lot of generosity, giving the food and the water and the drinks to many of the pilgrims who came. And one night he was asleep, 
He was there for a few days, and one of the days when he was asleep, he saw himself covering the Kaaba, where the Kaaba was never been covered before then. It was just left on its natural state. So he woke up the next morning, and he covered the Kaaba with the best of materials. The, th- the next night, he saw himself again covering the Kaaba with a better material. So the next day, he ordered to cover the Kaaba with a better material. And then the third day, the third night, he saw himself covering the Kaaba with better material than the previous two materials. So the third day, he woke up and he ordered his soldiers to cover the Kaaba, and himself is to cover it with better materials. And that's when it became the sunnah of covering the Kaaba. And it stayed that sunnah covering the Kaaba with three materials over each other until the time of Abdul Muttalib, the grandfather of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa as some of the historians say, in which it stopped from three materials to one material. And then they continue that to this day, that we're all aware that the Kaaba is covered. Before Tabban, Tabban As'ad, it was never covered. Until he saw that three dreams, three nights, three dreams, covering the Kaaba with better material each night. So he started to cover him with three materials. And that stayed a sunnah, stayed a path, a way that people kept on doing after Tubban Asad until the time of Abdul Muttalib in which became one, uh, one cloth covering the Kaaba. And then Tubban Asad went back to Yemen. And Tubban is the king of Yemen. He took over the kingdom of Yemen and they were named to be Tubba. The names of the kings of Yemen, they were named as to be Tubba. When Tubban Asad arrived to Yemen, the people of Yemen refused entry for Tubban saying that you've changed your religion. And they used to worship idols and fire. So Tubban Asad, Tubban Asad was refused entry by the tribe of Himyar was the main tribe in Yemen. They refused them entry saying that you changed your religion so that you've got no space or you've got no place within us. So Tubban Asad said, By Allah, my religion and the religion of those two scholars is the true religion. And what they used to have in Yemen back then, if there was a dispute over religious matters, they used to go to this fire that was locked up. The fire that was locked in a house. And when there's a dispute over any religious matter, they'll open the doors of that fire and wherever the fire comes to, that fire will come and destroy one of the parties. That means the one, the party that's been destroyed by the, by the fire is the wrongdoing party and the one that stays alive is the right party. So this is one of the things they used to believe in. If two people are in dispute or two parties are in dispute, they'll open the fire and whoever the fire attacks means that we're the wrong ones. So they said, let us go and make the, go to the, take the judgment of the fire. And the, I mean, this is how low their mentality was. It's small minded. So they went to the fire, the tribe of Himyar, and those two scholars from the Jews. And when they opened the fire, the fire came and attacked, came to attack the scholars from the Jews. So they started, the two scholars from the Jews. So they moved away. So the people of Yemen told them, don't move and have patience. So they stood there having patience over the heat of the fire until the fire swifted away towards the people of Himyar and burned them. So when the people of Yemen saw that, they took that as a sign of truth that the religion of those two scholars from the Jews is the right religion and the religion that we're on is the wrong religion. So the people of Yemen turned to Judaism. And that's how the religion of Judaism began in Yemen. That's how the religion of Judaism began in Yemen. Until Tuban, Tuban As'ad passed away, his brother, uh, his son, his son, his name Hassan bin Tuban, became the next king of Yemen. Hassan was strong and powerful, but he, he deceived himself and he was so eager to take over the Arabian Peninsula. So he forced his army to fight everyone in front of him and to take over the Arabian Peninsula. And many of the generals in his army refused to obey him. And they found Hassan is too eager, too selfish that he wants to take over the whole world and make them suffer in the battlefield. So what did they do? They deceived Hassan's brother, his name is Amr. And Hassan, the king at that time, Hassan bin, uh, bin Tubban, he was so... He was so picky and sus over anyone that will come into his room. He will refuse anyone to come and sit down with him, only specific people. One of them is his own brother. 